package came in today. And that's exciting because we can make another video about another sensor using what's inside. We've got an FTC rescue beacon or color beacon. Don't know if it's still being called rescue beacon this next year. FTC used a beacon in last year's game. It's being used again in this year's game where by pressing one of the buttons on the front, it'll make the, uh, the beacon glow blue and red. And using the Monitor Box color sensor, you can determine if it is blue or red, but there's some things you need to know in order to read something like this beacon. For example, you need to have your sensor in passive mode instead of active mode. So we're going to use a combination of the Rescue Beacon for uh, ambient light and red and blue balls for reflected light to show you how to use the Modern Robotics color sensor. The Modern Robotics color sensor has two modes. There is active mode and passive mode. Oh, well, hey there. Active mode is great for things like line following or detecting the color of objects. Passive mode is great for detecting the color of lighting, like from the lights on the ceiling or from flashlights or from things like the FTC rescue beacon. We made a ball sorter to show active mode. This ball sorter is using a color sensor to detect the color of each ball and then moving the servo accordingly. Here's FTC Team 7351 demonstrating the use of their monitor box color sensor on the FTC Rescue Beacon. If it's blue, it will turn red, blue, red, blue. They have a pretty good looking YouTube channel. Be sure to check that out afterwards. I'll be sure to link that below. Both modes have a variety of readings. The simplest reading is a color number. This is one value that represents a range of colors in the color spectrum. Other useful readings are the red, blue, and green readings from the color sensor. So it'll bring back different readings for each color, as well as clear and hue and all that kind of stuff. So if you look at the red, green, and blue readings, you can see if I hold the color sensor up to the rescue beacon, it'll show red as the highest value. And if I bring over to the blue side, it'll show blue as the highest value. I can switch those back and forth between the red and blue. It is really important that it's on passive mode for this. In active mode, I can easily detect the color of things like these red and blue balls. If I hold the ball over the color sensor, you can see that the red value is the highest of the red, blue, and green values. If I hold the blue ball over, the blue value is the highest between the red, blue, and green values. So you can easily tell if you're looking at a red ball or a blue ball or any other color. You can press the touch sensor on the program that you're going to write to change the, LED, the color sensor between active and passive mode. So you can change it into active mode and then see how big a difference that makes when you're reading the rescue or the color beacon. You can see that in active mode, it really filters out all of the light you're trying to detect. So you gotta make sure you're in passive mode when you're reading the rescue beacon. So how does this whole active passive thing work? Well, in active mode, the LED is only on for half the time. There's the LED element of the color sensor and then the color detector. The LED will turn on and then the color detector will take a reading. And then the color, the LED will turn off and then it'll take another reading. We'll subtract the second reading from the first reading and that is actually the values that you get is the math of the subtraction between the two. This happens so that it filters out any ambient light in the room. This includes things like the lights above your head, flashlights, the sun, uh, any other environmental things like that. So that way, if we're in a bright room or if we're in a dark room or if we're in a blue room or a yellow room or a really weirdly colored room, your reflected light values are still gonna be the same because your color sensor is filtering out those values. One thing it's really good at is filtering out the values coming from the color beacon or the rescue beacon. But this guy has a way to fix that. In passive mode, the LED does not turn on. It's simply reading what it sees without the reflected light. 
So it's seeing what light is out there in the environment. The readings are taken at either 50 hertz or 60 hertz. These 183 countries use 50 hertz for their main electrical power. These only 46 countries use 60 hertz for the main electrical power, and this includes the United States and most of North and uh, the northern part of South America. It's important that your color sensor is operating on the same frequency as your country's electrical frequency, and this is because the power coming to your house is actually going up and down ever, which makes the lights go up and down ever so slightly, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, particularly if you're using fluorescent light bulbs. The color sensor should be reading always at the same phase. So it could be measuring at the, at the peak, at the trough, in the middle, doesn't matter where, as long as it's exactly on the same point in that phase. So if we tell the color sensor, I'm in a 50 hertz country, it'll measure at 50 hertz and it'll always be in the same spot. Or if we're in a 60 hertz country, we tell it, hey, run at 60 hertz and it always measures at the same, the same spot. The default when you purchase the color sensor is 60 hertz, but you can change that and then the, color, the setting will stay with that color sensor no matter where you move it to until it's changed again. You can do this through Core Device Discovery or through the Start Spark program. Hopefully, eventually, you can do it through the FTC SDK that's coming, but be sure to check out the future pages to see how you can do that. This is just the first in a course on the color sensor. Be sure to check out the future pages. If you're watching this on Twitter or YouTube, go to modernroboticsedu.com to see where you can find out more about the color sensor lessons and activities, and he'll have tutorials about how to program the sensor using Spartan or the FTC SDK. Okay. Now let's switch to the other side. We'll see.